So we continue the pilgrimage. We left Ignatius in Paris, but he was very sick. Uh, he had uh, stomachal diseases uh, because of the fast, his very strong fastings many times, but also because it seems that he was uh, lacked of land. It means that uh, for around 12, 30 years, he has not been more in his mother land. And doctors told him that if he wants to recover his health, he should come back to his mother land because we, are, we have a kind of vegetable dimension. We have, we have a mineral dimension, no? we have a vegetable dimension, we have animal dimension, and it seems to be also have a human dimension. And the vegetable dimension is that we need roots. We are rooted. And when we lo lose our roots, we become lost. And other thing is that our more authentic roots are in the heaven, and that we are an inverse tree, in the sense that our roots are, comes from heaven. But also they come from earth. And we have to take also make a fertile tension between our earth roots and our heavenly roots together. So, doctor told him that he should come back to Afpetia, to Loyola, in order to recover his health. And then, here we have still another very important moment of his life, and very important moment of our life. Because all of us, we have roots. And many times of, perhaps not all of us, we have came back to our original motherland. And, but there are different ways to do that. Because the Ignatius that came back to Athpetia, to Loyola, was not more the Inigo that left Loyola three, 13 years before. In the sense that he has changed not only his personality but even his name. His original name is not Ignatius. His original name is Inigo. Inigo is a Basque name, close to Ignatius. But it seems it's not very clear how and when he definitely changed his name. Mm, but it seems that could be because in the University of Paris there were some official names, and Inigo was not there. And it, that is one interpretation of the, the reason that he changed his name. Inigo uh, became Ignatius, and Ignatius has in his Latin or Greek roots the meaning of fire, in ignis, ignus, fire. A man of um, a burning desire, a man of burning desires. And also because Ignatius of Antioch was a bishop that has been martyrized, martyrized in Rome. And when the lions has eaten all his body in the arena of the circus, Roman circus, they felt uh, they found this his heart in touched and touched heart with the name of Jesus in within him. The name of Jesus, the I, S, and E, the beginning of the three letters, that is a very common Jesuit ident identity, no? I, S, E, is not in Latin Jesus salvat omnibus salvator, it's not the, English, the Latin interpretation, it's a Greek three first letters of the name of Jesus. And these three letters have been found in the heart of Ignatius of Antioch when he has been eaten by the lions in Rome. Because of the devotion of Saint Ignatius for Jesus, the name of Jesus, he took also probably this name of Ignatius. Fire, and because he wanted to be also in his heart the three letters of the Jesus name in, within him. Anyway, he came back as a 
Ignatius and not as an Indian. And that means that he didn't went to his mother house or his family house, which was a, a noble and aristocratic place, an aristocratic castle. But uh, again, he went into the hostel with the poor. And that was an uh, insult by, for his older, uh, eldest brother, because why he can want not to be with us in the, our family place. And he's kind of um, making us and abusing to us being with the poor people. But that was his condition. He would want, wanted to, to be again at home, but not in a regressive way, but in a creative way. We can come back to our origins regressively, in, a, in making a regression, and then becoming again a child, and we, like, we have not do any way of our privilege, or we can we can come back to our families. We come back to our um, motherlands, but with an, as a new man and a, as a new woman that we are, with all the experience of our pilgrimage. So, and that is a very very important point for religious people, but also for married people. Most of our disturbance that when we when we go to our parents' place is because we don't know how we go, we are going back. We are going back to the same place. We are their children, but at the same time, we are adults. We, are, we have a new identity, who we are in, in front of them. It's not easy for, for neither of us. The way of how Ignatius came back to his motherland, not as an indigo, but as a new man, giving what he was and, and make, uh, being grateful with his family, but at the same time, in a creative way, making things different, not and not of the of the El Benjamin son of the aristocratic family, but making new things in the Aspeti in the village, transforming the situation of different um, injustices that were in, in the village, and so the his presence in Aspeti in Loyola, 30 years after, was a creative presence. When, because he came back in a, not uh, in a regressive way, but in a progressive way. So that is, again, another fertile tension. In one side, we have to be rooted, but in another side, we have to be universal. To be universal, it doesn't mean to have not a sense of feeling of the place of a very local values and a very local atmosphere that is there. But at the same time that we, we are able to, to be uh, attached with people uh, with the um, language or with the values or the culture where we are, at the same time we have to keep the universality. That will be also a very important fertile tension of the national spirituality and what is one of the keys of the inculturation that you talk four years ago. To be rooted and at the same time to be universal is not an easy thing, but it is part of our currents. And the other fertile tension of the Spatia, the Loyola time of this coming back to his motherland is to be in, at the grass level with the poor people in living in the hostel, with the hostel, in the hostel with the poor people, and to be aware of what their difficulties, their needs, and at the same time to be able to transform structures, to transform laws, to transform those who are the power to make decisions for the population. So in the in the grass level, and at the same time to be able to talk with politicians or uh, whatever you have to talk. He was. Uh, the, him in his own flesh, he has this synthesis of both, being down and also to be able to talk with those who are high. When he was only for three months in Athpeti, again, a time to rest, a time to recover his health, but not to rest, not, not to remain forever. The pilgrimage has not stopped, he, he, and we, we have to, 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 to be very aware, to discern huh? when this 
return must be um, has to be made and when we have to go further and further with to a new lands a new cities in this in his pilgrimage the city the next city the next meeting point will be Venice Venice is the place where the ships for to Jerusalem departed so still Ignatius wanted to come back to Jerusalem he was very obstinate he was a Basque man and so it, it still the original desire remained to him he had he was not able to go with uh, uh, to be alone so now we will go with all the first companions and they have the meeting in Venice from Paris, they say, in one year and a half time, we will meet in Venice, and together we'll take the ship to Jerusalem. But with one condition, if in one year no ship will take us to Jerusalem, is because perhaps the will of God is not to be to go there, but we will go to Rome, and we offer ourselves to the Pope. But for one year, they were waiting for if any ships will be lead them there. And Venice time is an important time for Jesuits because it was the Tarsian ship of the first companions. It's really like this. When I was said that to, to explain the society, of, that the biography of Ignatius was to found the society of Jesus, is because the step of his life are also the step of our way of proceeding. And this tertiary ship, that is at the end of the whole formation when we are already ordained, so when we have already done a, 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 a part of the work, we have to stop to go to look for uh, back to see what we have work and to look into what has to be already be walking and to be ready for it, to take the strength of what the, the weight has been already down for the weight that has been ready to be down. That is what is the tertiary ship, a time, a time of confirmation, a time of um, reconciliation of our own past, a time of recapitulation of, of our own theology studies, a time of uh, make a synthesis of what already is in us and what for what we are already still this available to do. It's a time of integration, of action and contemplation. Because during this year the first companions distributed themselves in couples or, or in three in different small cities around Venice. And then in the morning they went to praise to um, to do different works, different uh, social work also, um, taking care for poor people or confessing or whatever. And in the afternoon they met and they prayed together. So time to do and time to be down for silence. A time of action and, and a time of recollection and to, to make a sedimentation of what this action is doing in us. So, uh, yeah. a, a time of companionship, because they did in, in the small groups. Huh? Uh, the Tarshanship is a time also of, uh, to, to recognize the, our own generation and to, to feel what is our own generation has to, to, to put in, in, the, in the tradition, in our in the, this body tradition, huh? with other, uh, another equivalence that you can do in your Feminine congregations, or even in your lay, uh, lazy life, and finally, they accept that the will of God was not to go to Jerusalem because any ship laid left beneath. So we, they realized that the will of God was in Rome and not in Holy Land, and then they decided to go to the eternal 
city what is called Rome. And um, in the entrance of Rome, this is a very, very important moment in St. Ignatius' life, is the Storta Vision. And we can put at the same level the Cardinal Enlightenment and the Storta Vision. There are two main points of his, of his pilgrimage, in the sense that the Cardinal experience is a cosmic experience and is more related with already yes, in the sense that the presence of God is everywhere. <clears throat> you need only to be an open eyes, an, an open perception of all your being to taste and to feel this um, presence of God everywhere. But the store tradition is about the not yet. He's already there, but not totally there. And that is why that vision he had was Jesus Christ carrying his cross. He didn't see the glorious Christ, or he didn't see the small child Christ, or he could have another vision of Jesus Christ. He was carrying the cross. And the carrying the cross means the not yet of history, that not yet of cosmos, that so many moments and places and situations of sorrow where the cross is being carried by people, by humankind. And on the way to Rome, St. Ignatius was asking to Our Lady to be put into the, with the sun. And in the Storta Vision, it's not about Our Lady, it's not, the, uh, it's not Our Lady um, apparition, but it's the Father who puts Ignatius with the sun. That is, will be the end of the pyramids. What is the end of the pilgrimage? To be with Jesus. He wanted to be in Jerusalem, and in the story is much above Jerusalem. He's with the Son. He's walking with him, carrying the cross with him. So, in the one side, the end of the pilgrimage is there, in, beside Jesus Christ, but himself, Jesus, is in pilgrimage. Himself, Jesus, the Lord, the arising God, carrying the cross, is still in pyramids with the humankind that has not still achieved his fulfillment. So the pyramids of Ignatius join the pyramids of Jesus Christ that is pyramid with the humankind till the consummation of the times. But from this moment, he don't walk more alone. He walked beside Jesus Christ. And also, be, we, he didn't walk more alone because he walks with the first companions, with all the rest of companions. Arriving to Rome, we, f we find the, perhaps the, the last fertile Ignatian tension, tension which is between charism and institution. Charis will be, means, the always new, the uniqueness of each one of us, the uniqueness of each moment in earth, the uniqueness of each new group, new religious family, new inspiration that is all in, in the world. The, 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 the strength of the spirit that you don't know from where it comes and from, from where it goes. Right? You, you cannot control, you cannot dominate, you cannot... That is the, the car is... That is the fire and the wind. But at the same time, if you don't take care of the, of the stone of the fire, if you don't, don't protect this fire, and you, if you don't have more um, wood, uh, wood to, to put in the fire, the fire will vanish, will finish. So you need institution to take care of the continuation of the fire. But if there are too much institution, there are too much stones or too much wood, there will be not flame. So 
again and again. Fertilization between carries the wilderness of the spirit, the wilderness of fire, but at the same time, the concrete and the, provis the provision of what an institution is uh, to take care of the future, the past, the one who will come, the, to write what is clear for me, but perhaps will not is not clear for you, and not we, we it will not be clear for the next generation. If you have not a common text, how we will know if we are taking the same road, the same way or not? So institution is also needed. Hmm? Is the the mineral side of reality, eh? the rock, eh? what is consistent? Eh? At the same time, we need the wind, but also the rock. Not easy tension, but absolutely needed in everything that we did. That is why Rome. Why Rome? He could he stop in in many of other steps uh, during his journey. Because Rome was the universality. It was the Pope. It was the, the, the meeting point on all of the communities. It, it was the, 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 where the, only from Rome, the whole planet could be um, understood and could be included in the mission. The Pope is also the otherness of the society of Jesus. We don't obey ourselves. We obey another one who at, at, at the same time obey Jesus Christ. The obedience to the Pope is the obedience to the otherness. In, in the sense that to receive from others what we, we don't choose where we go. We receive the mission. We, we, are, we are not honor or uh, honors of ourselves. We receive from the other what we have to do. This is a dispossession also. To be dispossessed. So he arrived to Rome and we can say that after eight, 15 years walking outside, walking outwards, he started a new pilgrimage in wars. He will stay in Rome for 18 years till the day of his death. 15 years walking and 18 years remaining in Rome, but walking continuously inside of himself, deeper and deeper. And even he was stopped in Rome, but when he died, 1,000 Jesuits were around the world in four continents, still not in Australia, I'm sorry. <laughs> but all the other continents, they were. So, because he remained in one point, in a central point, the rest of the Jesuit could do their own pilgrimage. So, let us go a little bit into his inner pilgrimage during these 15 or 11, not sorry, 18 years in Rome. And we have a sacred document, a very delicate reading of him, that is his personal journal, his personal diary. He notes every day what he felt in prayer, and he has kept some folders, and when he was um, tell, um, talking, um, telling his autobiography to um, um, Kamara, the one who wrote, he showed him uh, 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 many papers where he had noted his own personal experiences during his prayers. Today we have only 14 pages of more other papers that they are not conserved. We don't know where they are, perhaps himself he borrowed it because his, his intimacy. And only we can go into his personal diary with a known respect because he never thought that nobody will read what he wrote. Uh, he, uh, and almost we are violating his, uh, his intimacy. So only we can open these pages with an enormous respect because it's a very, very int in, intimate life. And there, particularly, there is 
there are 40 days mm, written where he has a very strong struggle against God and against himself hmm? because he's writing the, out, the constitution of the society of Jesus and he's touching the question of poverty and the first companions in the deliberation that they had in 1541 they decided that they will be poor with the apostolical works the apostolical churches by they will keep some fixed incomes with the houses professors houses and houses of formation so we we trust in god but not totally we keep some money if the situation will be difficult and at this at the, because of the institution of the carries at, at the same time it seems for first companion was okay but he 20, uh, 10 years after writing the constitution where this decision would be forever he was not happy with that he was not uh, comfortable because he thought that he was lacking in confidence with God. He wanted to make the Society of Jesus also a pilgrim, and not also someone, some institution that has the honor of his own time, of his own resources. Uh, so he felt that writing on poverty, any houses of the Jesuit, of Jesuits, of the Society of Jesus, should have any fixed income should live for the work we do, for the help that we receive, and not for with the security of what we have. It was about security, about surrender, about to be able also for the institution to be really a pilgrim group and not a insulate group. Yeah? That is the point. And then he feel that is that the decision he have to make. But he want to have a consolation for uh, a, a, an election for first time. For first time means in first type in the spiritual, in spiritual exercises language means to have the guarantee that he has not committed a mistake. <laughs> the, to have the, the strong consolation that that's the way. And this consolation didn't arrived to him so he wanted to be poor but at the same time to want to he wanted to be the security that he wants that god wants for wants for jesus for the jesuits to be poor he was a struggle between to to be detached and at the same time to have the security that his decision was totally sure so it's, it was a struggle among among him and we have a very, very impressive, touching passages in this, his journal. For example, <coughs> saying that I was praying in the altar. Once more, the same being and the spherical vision allowed itself to be seen. In so way, I saw that all three persons I have seen first, then the Father in one part, the Son in another part, the Holy Spirit in another, and all three coming forth or having their derivation from his divine essence without leaving the spherical vision. On feeling and seeing this, new impulses and tears. He's going into the depth of the Trinity. He's discerning a very concrete thing on poverty, and at the same time, he's going in the very depth of divine Trinity life. Also, it seems to me in spirit that whatever before I see Jesus, I have, as I said, the most I saw white form in his humanity. In this occasion, my feeling of my soul was different, and I was aware not only about his humanity, but 
Jesus as a being completely of God with a fresh rush of tears and great devotion. He's in, in, in one of the most deep moments of his spiritual life. Again, later in the chapel, praying gently and quietly, it seems that at first my devotion had for his object the Trinity. Then it took me elsewhere, for example to the Father. In this way I felt within me a wanting to communicate me from different directions, so that eventually, while arranging the altar, my feelings found voices in my prayer. Where do you wish to take me, Lord? And repeat it many times. Where do you wish to take me, Lord? He's lost in the Trinity. He's lost about his decision. He's still a pilgrim, the founder of the Society of Jesus, the many people around him, and he's lost inside of himself. He's lost in Trinity and also nothing, not, not knowing what to what decide about this question of poverty. Still, I offer myself very moved and with tears to be guided and taken through all these stages wheresoever he might take me, being over me. After I had passed, I did not know where to begin. Then I took Jesus for my guide. I also appropriate to each person his own prayer. I content myself with the Lord's will. However, I did say, turning to Jesus, Lord, where I am going, or where following you, my Lord, I cannot be lost. That is the true Ignatius. That, was, that is the true pilgrim. Step by step, day by day, decision, election by, by election. Again, from beginning to beginning, all the time, all the time. And he says at the end of his autobiography, that all during all his life, year by year, day by day, he grew in his facility to find God in every moment and in everything. So the title of these two lectures there was Ignatius as a pilgrim of the supreme reality. Which supreme reality is? From which of which supreme reality we are talking about? The supreme reality is this reality. There is not another reality, but there are very different levels of reality. And the real pyramids is to walk from here to here. From here in small capital to here in big capital. Because here and now, where there is the Holy Trinity, where there is Jerusalem, where there is Rome, where there is each one of us, what is the law, what is Mary, what is everything and everybody here and now? It depends on the quality, on the quality of our transparency to reality that we will find God or we will not find God. So Ignatian spirituality is the, the journey to make transparency every moment and every situation the more and more as the place of the presence of God. And finding God in everything is what is that what that means? That in the middle of this forest of buildings, in the middle of the underground, in the middle of our papers in our office, in the middle of there is the breath of the Holy Trinity.
beating and, and speaking and, and sending deeper and deeper in the transformation of this reality. Because when Ignatius is lost in the Trinity, where is the Trinity? Here and now is the Trinity. The Father, as the background of every that we cannot touch and we cannot imagine and we cannot hear because he's in the capacity of touching, in the capacity of listening, in the capacity of, of, of listening, that is where the Father is. And the Son, what is the Son? Here is the Son. Each one of us are a piece of this body of Christ. So following him is going into the very root of ourself where the Son is incarnated again. In the contemplation of incarnation in the second week, in number 104, it is said, and contemplating this, the, the Christ will be incarnated again. That means when we look reality I, as Trinity and this look a reality, we are making Jesus Christ be incarnated again in the reality where we are surrendered or involved. It is said that there are three moments in the in spiritual life. God and things. God in one side and things or reality in another side. There is an and something here, here God and here reality. Second step, we are more able to see God in things. They are not, it's not God here and reality there. God is in reality. And then we start to, to find God in everything. But there is still a third level that things are in God. Reality is in God. So that is the journey that Ignatius did when he says that at the end of his life he increased in devotion and he says devotion means that I was able more and more to find God in everything, in every moment. I would say that uh, the one of the Ignatian's words to talk about spiritual life, it is consolation. Because the consolation comes of the obedience that God is everywhere. Consolation comes as the end of the spiritual exercises, when the fruit of all the process, all the pilgrimage that you do in the spiritual exercises, fulfill in, look how God is in every, every element giving being, in every mineral giving his, its consistence, in every vegetable giving his life, in every animal giving his life. Animation. God in the heart of reality. But the condition to be able to touch or to feel this presence of God everywhere is take glory and receive all my will, all my memory, all my understanding, all what I have done or know what I have. You all receive. What I have received comes for you, to you, from you. Take it again. Give me your love and grace, and that is it. So, what we receive, what, what we with, what we return, is what we have received, and the capacity of receiving is the capacity of surrendering. And when our capacity of surrendering increases. The capacity of receiving also increases, and the capacity of surrendering also increases. And that is the name of 
consolation, the meaning of consolation. Desolation will be about all the resistance that we have to surrender ourselves. Because the desolation is all the moments of not yet, and consolation is all the moments of already yes. And in this between process from ourself to God, consolations are desolations are the music of our movements because sometimes we are ready to surrender ourselves and at the same time we have we feel many resistance to do it. But when Saint Ignatius wrote being in Rome to Francis Borgia that was struggling with guiltiness and these things, he said, no, Francis, no. If you follow the way of God, you will be always in consolation. Don't force yourself to make penance. Don't force yourself to, want to be another one you are not. Just receive reality. And you will receive reality with God himself giving himself in reality. In the same measure that you surrender to this reality where God is. <clears throat> At the end of the spiritual diary, Saint Ignatius has a new expression in his writing. And the more and more he talks about loving humility. To do everything in loving humility. Humility means earth. Humi humility comes from humus, humus, humus. Latin humus. And humus is earth. Loving humility is to be in earth, retrieving like Earth is receiving everything and every moment. And when we walk step by step in Earth, we become the more and more humble, linked with the Earth. And the more and more we walk with attention and receiving lovely and sweet and with sweetness every moment and every situation, the presence of God becomes an evidence. And that is the Ignatian consolation. At the end of these reflections, just to perhaps it's the moment to 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 say two two questions for our personal reflection for the time that we have will be from where to where was the journey of the pilgrim? From where to where was the journey of the pilgrim? And from where to where is the journey of my life? From where to where I have to move. I call, I, I receive the calling to be moved every moment, every instant, from where to where. And then the pyramids is not an outside, an outward pyramid, but it is an inward pyramid. And that is what the beginning of this days would help you and could help us to start these days. We no needed nothing. We just we continue in moments of silence. We can just um, close our papers.
and uh, to make moments, some moments of silence. receive perhaps one word or one image of Ignatius' life. 